This is the Pete and Sebastian Show with Pete Corielli and Sebastian Maniscalco. Pete and Sebastian Show, we're back. Welcome, everybody. Thanks, as always, for listening. Sebastian Maniscalco on the other end. Bing, bam, boom. Let's have some fun, bro. Um, all right, so I got to apologize uh, right off the bat. Uh, we should have uh, shared this uh, sooner. Um, and I don't know if we could bump this episode up in the rankings or what, but we didn't really touch upon... Um, one of our avid listeners uh, just retired from football. JJ, Watt. no, we we didn't get much into that. I was thinking no. that myself. I felt kind of bad that, um, you know, we've known this guy for eleven years now, ten years, and uh, there was really no tribute into his career and how wonderful it was and whatnot. And I stumbled upon, and I don't know if you've seen this, I stumbled upon a video uh, online that the team had had done for Watt. And it was featured on Hard Knocks on HBO, Arizona Cardinals. And uh, did you see it? No, but before you go any further, this speech, you're going to say it's from a long time ago during Hard Knocks? No, no. Hard Knocks did uh, hard. No- they did something different oh. this year. They did Hard Knocks in season with the Arizona Cardinals. Normally oh, they do it preseason. Gotcha. They did one this season. So I Not stumbled the- upon this yeah. this video, and I watched it. And I wanna I wanna share the video with not only you but the listeners because I think it's a good synopsis of 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 Watt's career. Now I'm gonna play the video. And I want you to comment on the video after uh, we see it. So let's put up the video now. We'll play it for Pete. Where's Jay at? You're playing your last game tomorrow night, okay? Coach Burke had a great idea. You're going to love this, I hope. Brother, Jage, I just wanted to say congratulations on retirement. Um, you and your resiliency throughout all the ups and downs you ending up in the NFL and you being a defensive player of the year and you having all the success that you had showed me that it's possible. Congratulations, buddy. See you in camp. Congratulations on your incredible football career. You're an incredible player. Excited to see the next chapter of your life. Good luck, brother. Man, you were paying my ass for a long time. It was an honor to share <laughs> the field with you. Congrats on your retirement and Hall of Fame career, Jage. It's been so special having a front row seat to it all and I couldn't be more proud of you. Love you, bro. AJ, before you were born, we had really big dreams for you and high hopes, but boy, you kind of blew those all out of the water on your own. We are so happy for you. Um, it's been just a complete joy watching you all through the years. I got to be a big part of it for your first uh, journey back in the day when I was your coach, and uh, it's been a pleasure to watch you ever since. Uh, kind of sad to see it come to your last game, but uh, you have so many great things ahead of you that uh, I'm looking forward to what the future brings for you, Kaylee and Koa. It has been such an honor to watch you work your ass off these past years and do whatever you needed to do to be the best. And you've always been so generous and kind and loving to everybody around you. And you never forgot who you are. Congratulations. 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 I love you, brother. Um, just so proud of you. And I know Cole will be so proud to be your son. Now, I got to start off comedically. This is my job. <laughs> you think they play that video before the game if they were in playoff contention? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think they're like? They're 4 and 12, slap it up. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying, I'm a Jet fan. But anyway. So, like, I don't know. If they're playing for a playoff game, you can't put that up there. Guys are fucking dabbing their eyes with tissues and shit, and they're about to go out and play Dallas. You, you know, it's a different environment. But I also love how when they did the videos, I think the last one, the last, one of the quarterbacks was Dak Prescott. Yeah, right? yeah. But the other three, they were like, listen, 
we could get everyone who ever threw a football in this league to come on and say wonderful things about JJ. Let's just get the three best living of all time <laughs> in Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady, and Peyton Manning. You know what I mean? The, like you think like the you know someone who used to play for like the Dolphins. I'll do it too. They're like we got the three fucking <laughs> we got the three headed giant. We're good. Thanks. <laughs> We're gonna switch over to the family now. You know, wow. I mean, they didn't even use Eli. Eli was probably right next to Peyton when they filmed it. And they're like, hey, can you slide off camera? We're just doing the all-time great scene. All-time great to all-time great. Yeah, man. I mean, I shot out a little text. Uh, he was my original reason on why I didn't, like, with you, like, kind of go big with it. I still wasn't convinced he wasn't going to the Steelers for one last season. Oh. You thought there thought, was a possibility that the thought, entire family play? Yeah, I thought he might slide over there and, you know, never see a duo like that, you know, brother to brother sharing sacks, you know. But anyway, uh, I don't know what to say other than, I mean, we, wow, it's a regret, bro. I don't have many of them in our lives, but we never made it to a game together. God well, you you made it to a game. I made it to a game separately, but we didn't go together. Yeah, which we should have done. That's on us. Um, I filmed my reaction to that video right after I saw it because I saw the video. I played it on uh, my TV, and uh, I filmed it. I filmed the reaction because I felt like I had to like I had to film the reaction and then send it to Watt. Wow. Okay, and I want to play you my reaction. All right. <laughs> to what you j- <laughs> what you just saw. All right. Before it might, you play but, it. Yeah, yeah. Listeners at home, here's your moment in your car if you're driving with family. You want to take bets if there's going to be tears in this video <laughs> or, or not. <laughs> I want to know why I wasn't involved in the retirement video <laughs> that I just watched. Uh, I'm not going to lie, bro. I'm emotional. Um. No, I'm serious. I don't know my fucking period, bro. Um, just wanted to send a video, though. Uh, I don't know if they could re-edit that with me in it, because this is like, you know, no one cried in the damn thing, but your, but your wife. Um, but I remember when I first met you in, fuck, we went to Houston. We went to breakfast, and we sat down in your truck after breakfast and had a nice conversation and now was that 11 years later you are retired and uh <laughs> my oh my god it did, no it's the video the mother the brother jage i had no idea your name was jage um but yeah, uh, congratulations, buddy. I don't know why I'm fucking balling, but um, great career. More things to come. Big, big, uh, big things to come. Look at that tear, bro. On the right eye, that is fucking beautiful. That's fucking beautiful. I love you, man. Did I just say I love you? <laughs> congratulations. Oh, my God. You caught me in a... Fuck, I, I had to get this on film, bro. All right. Oh, man, that was emotional. Oh, my God. It hit that red button. It, hit it. Hit the red button. <laughs> All right, guys. One of the most exciting things about a new year is that you have no idea what adventures are in store for you. From new travel experiences to new jobs or picking up new skills, there's no better way to prepare for 2023 than by learning a new language with Babbel. Now, for myself, uh, we're planning a trip to Italy this summer, and I plan on using Babbel not only for me and Lana, 
but hopefully the kids will start picking up some Italian phrases and Italian words to uh, benefit them as they travel through the Tuscan uh, wine region. Uh, Babbel is the language learning app that sold more than 10 million subscriptions. I mean, come on, people, 10 million? Thanks to Babbel, addictively fun and easy bite-sized language lessons you could feel confident no matter where the new year takes you. That's right, man. And the beauty of Babbel, like you said, short little sessions, bro. Before you know it, you'll be able to order espresso in Italian. Before you know it, you'll be asking for a room with a balcony. With Babbel, you only need 10 minutes, 10 minutes to complete a lesson. That's beautiful. So you can start having real life conversations in a new language in as little as three weeks. Just to prove to you, three weeks from now, I'm going to do the next Babbel commercial in Spanish. (laughs) <laughs> other language <laughs> other language learning apps use AI for their lesson plans, but Babbel lessons were created by over 150 language experts and voiced by real native speakers, not computers. And to piggyback on what Pete's saying, you know how you order espresso in Italian? Espresso. Their teaching <laughs> methods has been... Su- scientifically proven to be effective. I mean, with Babbel, you could choose from 14 different languages. Plus, Babbel's speech recognition technology helps you to improve your pronunciation and accent. There are so many ways to learn with Babbel. In addition to lessons, you could access podcasts, games, videos, stories, and even live classes. Plus, it comes with a t- uh, 20-day, 20-day money-back guarantee. That's babble.com slash the cast for up to 55% off your subscription. Babbel, language for life. <laughs> wow, man. No. Let me get your thoughts on, on, on my video. Are you there? <laughs> I'm right here. I'm looking at you. Yeah, yeah, oh, no. I thought you said. Oh, I thought you said. Let no, me no. give you my thoughts on my video. No, no, I, I oh. want your thoughts. Oh, I, yeah. on the... Well, I mean, <clears throat> if you weren't talking to him directly, I would think that was for his wake. Holy <laughs> shit! <laughs> Let's start right there. You know, uh, I. But uh, you didn't hear me laughing as soon as it started, and you go, "Why wasn't I involved in that video?" I was howling out out loud. I mean, that's hilarious. That's so you. Like, and by the way. I remember, not only do I remember the first time you went out with him, which DJ Lou does different things with the audio of these casts. So DJ Lou, at the end of this, if we could go and play uh, the segment of the cast, I think it was from season one probably, Mm -hmm. of when Sebastian talked about going and meeting Watt for breakfast. That'd That'd be nice to add. But then I remember going to Umami Burger with Jackie and Lana, the four of us, and you telling me that uh, Watt listens to the cast, and I, I, I wanted to put it on my resume <laughs> that JJ Watt listens to the podcast. And then the first time I got a text from him, oh my god, I'm like a fucking showing Jackie. Holy shit! You know, fucking mailman's putting mail in my mailbox. I'm like, hey, what's up? I just got a text from Watt. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, man, it's it's uh, and you know what the thing is, dude. I mean, one of the greatest of all time, of all time. I mean, there were times he was, I said in the text, he 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 played at a level that nobody ever played at before. I mean, just beast. So, yeah. I mean, there was a three-year stint there that he was just, you know, no, no one was better. But I want to get back to. I like Brady's, by the way, the best. That was so funny. You were a pain in my ass. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. You want to get back to what? Now, I felt like I was an open book in my video. In my video. I, I felt like that. I didn't hold yeah. anything back. It was just there. It was raw, what have you. Now, at the end of the video we just played, your reaction, I felt, and you could you could tell me otherwise, I felt if you didn't go the comedic route, with your analysts, your uh, analysis of the video, yeah. that you were going to cry. So you had to go to the humor to save yourself 
from crying. Am I right? You I, looked emotional. No. I got to tell you. <clears throat> no, I, I early on, I was a little emotional. Uh, but then, you know what kind of took me out of it a little? Wasn't expecting to see Watt crying. That kind of pulled me back. Like it didn't. It didn't draw me in more. Oh. It was, uh, yeah. It was more of a like. And then, and then, you know, when we start cutting to the players. I was just. A, it was. I don't know. It wasn't. It was nice, but I didn't get overly sad about it because, you know, this guy's got his whole life ahead of him. He's a handsome guy. He sky's the limit. That's just one chapter, and it was unbelievable. But you know, I had a, another story playing in my head. Yeah. Here, and I'll tell you why it hit me on an emotional level. This guy has been playing football pretty much his entire life. Yeah. And I went back to the history of it, delivering pizzas and didn't know if he was, you know, going to make it. No, not now, you know, made it to the NFL. He plays, whatever, 11 years, and it's all coming to an end what he loves to do is no more so that's got to be a slap in the face then what hit me is when he's crying you had the opposite effect i was looking at a mountain of a man who's stronger than steel looking at his own brother two brothers and mother and then his son, who doesn't even know yet what his father is, on the video. And I'm thinking, man, when the son looks back, when he's 21, looks at that video and his father. Come on, how the fuck, bro? I think you got a black soul. No. I <laughs> Listen, I didn't cry, but it was really emotional. And the brother stuff was just what you called me. I really did, but... Uh, I'm still not convinced I'm not going to be paying, uh, you know, 18, 20 bucks to see him within two years with a Uzi in his hand standing next to fucking Stallone <laughs> in an action movie. You know what I mean? I'm also, and and I feel with football specifically, and I know it is the end of all the stuff, you know, but it's almost like on a grander scale, when you're in college and you're loving, you're having so much fun in college, but by your senior year, you're like, all right, I'm done. And I feel like as much as, you know, you're saying you'll never get to play again. I feel like sometimes these guys get to a certain age and they're like, ah, I don't want to get hit anymore. So it's a little of that too, you no, know? No, yeah, no, I, I But you're agree. right. End of a chapter, man. And that's End of an, an chapter. unbelievable chapter. But here's what bothers me in professional sports, and you touched on it a little bit. <clears throat> Bro, by the way, when you get a Cecil B. DeMille Award someday, you're going to be a puddle, bro. Or a fucking Mark Bottle. Twain. Awesome. <laughs> For an Oscar, even your Oscar. If you ever get it up. <laughs> uh, you'll mention everybody but the podcast. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Sorry, so, I interrupt. Okay. No, don't, don't worry about it. This is what I don't like about professional athletes. Yeah. And you, you hinted on it a little bit, and, and I equated to exactly what you were saying. <sighs> what do you think? Some of these athletes, they don't go away. And what I mean by that is they keep coming back to the to the team. Like, they're always, like, around, like, they're in their 60s, and they're still hanging around, like, the, <laughs> you know, like a... <laughs> I love when the guy... Who used to play for the team is rooting for the team. They're in the playoffs, but not a guy on the team even knows who you are. That's how <laughs> long ago it's been, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's like the guy who's lingering around like the football games in high school and he's like 23. You know that guy? Like, he, yeah. He's, and we touched on this before. He's the guy that's coming to prom. When he's in college, you know? <laughs> right. And by the way, he always goes, if he played for like, no matter what sport, if you play for like three teams, you always linger around the organization that you had your best years. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like Tom Brady ain't hanging out in the fucking bucket. He is, you know, he's going to go yeah. back and 
root for the Patriots. Yeah, you know, that kind of thing, I guess. Although he won one with them, too. But, yeah. yeah. Like, I feel like Watt spending more time with the Texans organization through the years than, than he— Oh, well, he only had two. Right? He only had two in yeah. Arizona, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. So yeah, that's our watch tribute. Good for that you, is... JJ. We wish you the best yeah, in your in your future endeavors. Um, now, know. let's hop in, and and this is one of my favorite parts of the Pete and Sebastian show over the years. Uh, it's when Pete has a travel story, uh, and I, I, before the show, he had mentioned that. He's got uh, an airplane uh, situation that he came across uh, over the week. I, uh, I, I can't, I, I, I'll tease it and say, came semi close to being taken off the plane in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a tricky way. So, first, let's start with the first one. Let's start with the first one. You ever have this? This was great. I was at the airport. I was just checking something on my flight at the desk. It was no problem. But the guy in front of me, was going off on the lady saying, you know, they just closed the doors on the last flight. And he says he had a seat on it and you gave my seat away. You gave it away. You gave it away. You let that person on when that was my seat. And then he goes, uh, and, and, and everyone saw it. And he turns around to me and the guy behind me goes, I've witnessed it. You guys are my witnesses. And it made me laugh because you haven't, you haven't been around someone who hit you with that move. You, you were a witness, right? Like, you're like, guy, what? <laughs> You, what do you think I'm going to do? Miss my flight and leave a fucking statement? I mean, <laughs> this is, I love that, man. <laughs> so, <clears throat> anyway, here's what happened with the, the other flight I had this weekend. So, I'm flying out of Buffalo. I got a connecting flight at JFK, and it's tight. And then in Buffalo, it's light flurry, so we got to de ice. Which, but why don't we, can't, why don't, why can't we de ice before we get on the plane? Right? So then when we get on, oh, wouldn't it be great to get on? And the pilot goes, as you can see, we need to de-ice. Uh, the bad news is we need to de-ice. The good news is I got here early and did it <laughs> before you got on. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, this is, this is why. I, I, I'm assuming if they de-ice early, between the time they de-ice and they take right. off, they got to de-ice it again, right? All right, but can't you just have two rows of de-ices as we're going down to where we're going and they just hit you like a car wash? Why do we got to go off to the side? You know? I, it drives me nuts. So and, anyway. Hey, wait, yeah. wait. I, I, yeah. On the de-icing. <laughs> I don't care how many times they got to de-ice. I always got to watch. Do you ever watch the de-ice uh, and go, oh, did, did they miss the, they missed some? I do. I wonder, like, how re how important is this de icing? Like, is the guy getting it going? The other guy going, Tommy, don't miss a fucking spot. One spot and bring this bird down. <laughs> you know, I'm right there with you. So, <laughs> so we get de ice, and while we're getting de ice, I'm like, God, oh, this is killing me. And then we took a while to get out, and right before, say, five ten minutes before the plane takes off, because I fly Delta so much. On my app, they hit me with a uh, listen. Basically, the message said it looks tight for your connecting because your flight's taking off late. Uh, if you want, we can rebook you right now on an 11:30 a.m. flight that'll get me in at four. And they go, oh, we can book you in on another flight that won't that'll get me in too late for my show. It's going to Florida, so I'm like, shit. If I take a chance and don't change my flight by the time I land, if I miss that next flight. That 11.30 is going to be booked. I'm going to miss my show. So I better take him up on it and get on this 11.30. So I rebook myself on the 11.30. Uh, I'm not making this long. But anyway, then when we land, uh, it turns out that the flight attendant comes on and goes, uh, and, and don't get up at your seats. We still have some people have connecting flights to Fort Lauderdale, and, which is where I was going. I'm like, what the fuck? Some other people didn't do this. They're going for it. And when I looked at the flight, we were coming in Terminal B, and the Lauderdale flight was going out in Terminal C. So I'm like, oh, plus I'd have to run. It's insane. Forget it. Now when we land, they go, that uh, that one's across. the. It's right there, the next terminal. So when I get off, I'm like, holy shit, I could have made my Lauderdale fight. So I walk over to them, and I go, I was supposed to be on this. You guys suggest that I stay here for four hours to catch an 1130, but I can clearly get on this, so can you put me on? And the lady goes, no, we already gave away your ticket. And I go, well, why'd you give it away? Well, you you book, you rebooked yourself. I go, you told me to rebook myself because I wasn't going to make this, and it's right here. So now I'm pissed. 
But anyway, here's the part I had to do the setup. So now I have a flight yeah. at, at four hours later. Hold on, and, before, uh, before you, we, yeah. I'm sorry, I'm sorry to interrupt, but, but I, I wanna, I wanna just kind of uh, mine some little nuggets within your story. Yeah. Please. Have you ever, when they're saying, please sit down and let other people get off the plane because they have other flights to catch, have, <laughs> right. have, you, have you ever pretended that you had a flight to catch and got off with that group? <laughs> oh, so you, shit. That's like in Die Hard when Bruce Willis follows the ambulance through the traffic. <laughs> yeah. I've done that once or twice, not meaning to, like, because I'm standing and the person behind me goes, uh, I have to get up, I have to catch a flight. And I'm like, oh, so do I. So I just kind of go with the oh, masses. Okay, so but with otherwise, okay. no. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But. But you, we both know when they come on and say, uh, please stay seated, some people have to you, you may as well just be humming a fucking tune, lady. Nobody's listening to that shit. <laughs> you know, because everybody just pops up, <laughs> you know. So, and they go, oh, but don't worry, you, you gotta, you gotta, we already have you booked on the next flight, you're all set, you know, uh, emergency exit row, so you have foot space, so I'm like, oh, yeah, that's good. So then I get on my flight, right? They got me in the, it's, it's a four-hour flight. And now I'm in the middle seat. Before I had an aisle seat, uh, my whole, you know. Now I'm in the middle. And now the row in front of me is exit row. My row is an exit, so it's tight as hell. But because the exit row is in front of me, my seat don't even go back. Plus there's like some sort of oxygen tank taking up half my seat under me. I got the shittiest seat, and I'm just sitting here like this, right? And I'm oh, like this. And I'm so mad at myself because I'd already be in Florida sitting by the pool smoking fucking, well, I'd be in Florida <laughs> by the pool. That's an edit. <laughs> so I'm furious at myself. So then uh, the flight attendant comes over and she does the speech. This is what happened. Right? She gives a speech about, I have to talk to you because you're in an emergency exit row. And she's clearly talking to the people in front of me because they have the space. But I'm like, wow, it looks like she's about to tell us too. And all th rows here. But I put my head down because I'm like, she can't be talking to me. I'm in a shit row with no room. So I got my head down. She's like, are you ready and willing? And I hear, yes, yes, yes. And I even hear the guy right next to me go, yes. And I'm like, oh, it is our row. I'm like, I ain't fucking looking up. And then I hear her go, sir. <laughs> oh, right? Like that. And then I do like that. I'm like, yeah. And she goes, are you ready and willing? I go, I go, uh, this is an Damn. exit row. And she goes, this exit row. I go, how would anyone even get through here? There's no room. And she goes, it's an exit row, sir. I need to know are you ready and willing to help people if they need to get through and I go, I didn't even know this was an exit row. And then she goes, sir, I need a verbal yes, or else we'll have to find you another seat. I go, oh, I could sit somewhere else. And she goes, yes, sir, if you're, if you're not going to sit there, we'll have to find you another seat. Would you like that? And I go, any seat's better than this seat. <laughs> That's what I said to her. And then she goes, okay, sir, one moment. And she goes over to talk to the other flight attendant and look at the guy next to me. And I'm like, I mean, this is bullshit. There's no, who are we going to help? Who would come down this road? There's no room. My seat doesn't go back. So then I hear him whisper. And I notice flights like full. It's been like filling up. So I'm like, when are they gonna put me? But it can't be any worse. She comes back over and she's like, "Okay, sir. It seems that there's another flight later." I go, "Wait, wait, wait. not you're not gonna get me on another seat on this flight." And she goes, "Sir, if you don't want to sit there, we'll have to put you on another." And I go, "Whoa, you didn't say that. Fine. I'll." I go, "Yeah, whatever. I'll." I go, "Well, fine. I'll save people like that. I'll save everybody. I go, I'll help everybody." You know. And then she goes. I need a verbal yes, sir, and I gotta look up and I go, yes, I will help people in the emergency exit row so I don't have to be on another airplane later than I already am, yes. Oh, Jesus Christ, you you're an ass. Yet. I'm not an ass, bro. Bro. I know I kinda was an ass, I kinda was. I hate that guy. I was that guy, I hate that guy. I, if, I was, if I was sitting next to you, I'd be going, Motherfucker, just say yes. What do we gotta go through the whole fucking thing? That this is an exit <laughs> road. Is that the, just get the? I'd be going. I got a flight to catch, guy. Just, <laughs> well, I, I will say in my defense, there was still a lot of boarding going on. If we were already locked and loaded, I would have been like, "Hey, listen, don't worry." And I even threw out at the end, which I thought was a nice touch after all. I go, yes, then fine, yes, you know. And she walks away, and I look at the guy next to me. I go, I'll help you too, but that's it. Whatever, this shit. <laughs> 
Because he was, it was bullshit that our seat didn't go back. He was pissed about it too. They don't even tell you that. And let me, bro, you don't understand. I know you fly a lot. You do understand, but our listeners might not understand who fly a lot. When you got to sit perfectly still for four hours, I bank on my plane sleep. That's part of my, I take that into consideration. I'm like, I'll get that, I'll get that three, right? So now I'm on there. And when you don't go back at all, what happens is this. What happens is. Like that, and and you snap your neck like constantly, right? And you, go, uh, uh, you know, and then right, just that three inches, just that. It, that is the difference between a good day and a bad day. You know what I'm saying? That three inches. I mean, it's all I want is that three inches. That, and then when my seat don't go back, when the plane takes off, I'm like. You know how it takes about 10 minutes to level out? I'm like, that's the only nap I'm going to get is when it's automatically back because we're going up. <laughs> so I'm like, that's my 10-minute nap. Get that while you can. <sighs> it's a whole thing, bro. Oh, shit. Oh, my <laughs> God. <laughs> Brutal. You ever try to get a cup of coffee in an airport lately, too? You can't get one in under 45 minutes. It's fucking unbelievable. <laughs> the lines are I, I've right. never seen. I, I, I'm as I'm walking to my gate, I see like a line going. Oh, that must be a canceled flight, and now they're all in line trying to. It's a Starbucks. <laughs> oh, I know, and I always think, I always think I'm gonna find the one coffee shop that no one knows about, and it just ain't there, man. They're just always loaded. You know, you could try getting. I mean, like, oh, you can get a ha- you can get a cup of coffee at like there's like a hamburger place, and I'm like, that's got to be the <laughs> shittiest cup of coffee. Well, uh, my whole thing with the airports in regards to coffee places. So we, I would bear to bet that a coffee place is the most busiest place in the airport. Why aren't the coffee places staffing up? I agree. When it comes to okay, it's six a.m. Starbucks got two guys working the damn counter at six a.m. at LAX. <laughs> oh, right? no. oh. There need to be about nine people behind there. And then when somebody orders something that's got to go in that little piece of shit oven they got, I'm like, oh god, here we go. Because <laughs> now the lady stands by the oven with the fucking metal tray. I'm like, you could have got three <laughs> coffees in <laughs> until that damn thing came out of the oven. <laughs> Omaha Steaks, baby, the world's best beef. I got a freezer with this stuff. It's going fast. I'm eating it so much. Naturally aged for the ultimate in tenderness, juiciness, and flavor. You can't go wrong with an Omaha Steak, folks. And I just sent a couple to my neighbor for doing me a big favor by plowing my driveway. Uh, The past two weeks, he's done it for me. And I can't tell you how grateful he is. Because when you get a steak as a gift... You're like, there's somebody who knows what a gift means. Omaha Steaks have everything you need to elevate the everyday and solve the dinner dilemma with convenient, hearty, gourmet meals. Five generations of family-owned expertise means uncompromising quality that you could trust. Now, every steak and every entree is flash frozen, vacuum sealed, and ready to share with your entire family. Every steak and every entree is backed by our unconditional 100% money-back guarantee. I mean, come on, Pete. There you go. How could you not kick off 2023 with any other way than going with Omaha Steaks? Because you get more flavor and more savings. Stock up and save up to 55% on select Omaha Steaks customer favorites. I mean... Buy more and save more when you stock up on these mouth-watering deals. Plus, with the special radio offer, get $30 off your order. Minimum order required. Whether it's appetizers for the big game, a romantic Valentine's Day dinner, or just a regular weekday night, now is the perfect time to stock up. And every order is backed by our 100% money-back guarantee and delivered right to your front door go get it people now visit omahasteaks.com use the promo code the cast at checkout to get an extra 30 bucks off your order minimum order may be required they just need to have people lined up like a a track race with a baton just (laughs) handing off coffees 
as we come in. Because <laughs> you can't go through security with it, so now you know 10,000 people are about to want a fucking cup of coffee. <laughs> are you losing me? You keep looking at me like you're having technical problems. No, 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 no. You're, you're, something happened where you, you froze, yeah, and then you that, sped yeah. up, and now, oh. now it's back to, oh. now it's back oh. to speed. The internet couldn't even handle your aggression, bro. <laughs> hey, can we discuss real quick before we go any further, just briefly, unless, you, and I wanted to talk about something there, when we discussed about possibly doing a guests and going out to yeah. Cali, and I just yeah, wanted yeah, to yeah. let you know, Sebastian and I were talking about possibly me coming out there at some point after you film your HBO show and spending a, a week or so and having in studio guests when the studio's done. And you said to put together a list. Mm -hmm. And you go, just put together a list and don't even worry about whether or not we'd never be able to get them or not. Okay. Bro, my list is wow. <laughs> it's do, it's pretty. It's do you want to do you want to share the list? Just to, it's just, you know, just I mean, give, you're give saying me to put it give, give me a taste of like your top what? three. Well, you want the white whale? <laughs> the, the white whale. The white whale's Tommy C. Tom you know, Cruise. If we, if, I mean, if we, if we landed him, because I don't think this guy, this guy, again, is like Michael Jackson. You don't see this guy doing podcasts. But you don't see podcasts like this. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I, I'm so zoned in on getting Tom Cruise on the freaking podcast that I literally took into consideration last episode, you said you're growing a garden. Where is that going to be located? Because I think the only way we're going to land Tom is if you have room for him to land the helicopter in the yard. I'm not even kidding. Is there, do we have enough room to, to land it? I think there is enough room. The blade might hit that glass side wall, <laughs> but I just don't see Tom Cruise getting in a car unless he comes on like a Ducati by himself and no one even knows it's him. <laughs> see, Patrick, can we get this to Tom? <laughs> Did, or can we just get like all the times we've talked about the guy? I so, think what I we mean, should do is, yeah, no, I, I, think, I think that would be a great get. But, um... Maybe we do a uh, compilation uh, of a video of us talking about him. And we do that. Man. We put that together in a nice package. By that time, my garden will be up and running. We send them the thing with with a fresh with a fr fresh basket of vegetables and say, "Come on the show." No, that's it. That's it. I will literally convert to Scientology <laughs> during the cast. If, that, if that's what it took, I'm telling you. Um. And my list goes everywhere from, you know, uh, Stevie Nicks, as I'm looking for, to Tony Robbins, the guy, you know? Mm. So, yeah. That's a good one. That's a good oh. one. No, yeah. no, no BP in there? I, I didn't put Brad Pitt on there, and I'll tell you why. Because I feel like, uh, um, I mean, he's on there, but I feel like it's just a matter of time be between your connections, I'm having a cocktail with that guy anyway. <laughs> 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 you know well uh, we we referred to this last cast about the big birthday party that Lana and I were gonna gonna have 40 50 and 10 10 year anniversary everything equal on uh, 100 we went to a party on Friday night it was uh, Jimmy Kimmel's 20th anniversary party that he had for his TV show and he invited people that he has you know had on the show and guest hosted and whatnot it's a big party really big party it was uh, downtown LA in a tent and the party was huge i mean it was pretty big and as i was at that party i was like mm, a big party doesn't suit us well just because it's too big it's right. too big we, we want to be able to kind of talk to people and enjoy enjoy it rather than like oh did you get to talk to no i didn't get to talk to them i didn't see them and whatnot so what would they gonna do i think sometime during the summer so it's a nice little intimate dinner maybe you know anywhere between you know 12 and 20 people sit down outside have a chef nice. cook and whatnot so i think that's the vibe we're gonna go plus we've decided instead of spending all that money on a party we're gonna go to italy i think over the summer right. take a nice little family vacation you're invited to the party, but it's not going to be a, you know. Who's who? A, 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 
<laughs> it's not, not going to be a blowout. It's going to be like, you know, I, I, we haven't put the guest list together yet, but. Uh, I'm not, um, not going to be going, I'm, I'm sorry, Jason, can you pass the salt? <laughs> yeah. And by the way, I, I'm so excited for the next season. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was party. I'm looking for like Bobby Flay's coming out with the aprons. Everybody liking the uh, the tacos. <laughs> Bobby, sit down. Enough cooking. Get over here, guys. <laughs> Are you ever good? You like do? I wonder do Hollywood people ever have those kind of parties where they're like, let's just have. I I don't know. I mean, I guess it depends who your friends are. Really, at the end of the day, but I bet this. You know, some like the one you were at. You talked about the last show. I mean, there was only seventy people there. Like there was so many big people's interesting. I don't know. Just talking it, out loud. Very happy for you, Italy thing. A little disappointing for me. Yeah, no, we'll we'll have a nice little sit down or something. I'm coming to the intimate sit down. I'm coming to the intimate sit down. S Sadie's part of the swim club, so they had a uh, Jackie's on the board. They, you know, you got to try and raise money because you got to pay for the coaches and the pool and blah blah blah. So I said. Hey, well, why don't I, I'll do a benefit, you know, we'll do a show. So we have a place in town called the Beaver Club, right? <laughs> and I'm doing a show, but I'm doing it just for, you got to buy tickets, obviously, but it's it's not like public thing where, you know, and everybody was great, like trying to help put this thing together, but like, um, so there's no stage. So one guy was a real good guy. He's like, my father-in-law has this old stage in his barn. I'll bring it over in the pickup truck. And the night before, I was playing in Florida, and Jackie's like, yo, you got to make those flights. I hope the weather, because, you know, everyone's coming to this thing at the Beaver Club. I, I, I'm, I'm more nervous to do this Beaver Club show <laughs> than, than I was, like, to do theater or whatever, right? So then I get there that night, right? It's, it's fun. It's a whole town and stuff, like, all the people. But, like, I'm looking at the stage, and they get the thing, and I go, there's no lights yet. And I'm like, so what do we, I go to one guy, what, what do we got for lights? How's that going to, you think they'll see me? And he goes, no, we hooked up the lights that your wife gave us to the front of the stage. We'll turn them on. I go, my my wife gave you lights? What lights did she give you? And he goes, I don't know. She said to hook these up. She said she got them out of your basement. I walk over. She she took the clamp lights that I use like when I'm spackling in the house. And she's got them <laughs> each on the end of the thing. Now, the place is packed. I walk up. I, I got a beer in one hand. I turn the light on. There's a lady right st sitting right there in the crowd in the front row. She's like, you're blinding me. Now I'm turning the light. I'm like, is that is that okay? She's like, yeah, that that'll do. And, and, and then I go, do we need that other light on? They, and they're like, we can't see. What. So I'm going over there. And, and in my head, I'm like, bro, I just played in front of 500 at this beautiful <laughs> theater last night in Florida. And, and and nobody's even being like, uh, oh, geez, it's so you know cool of you to do your own. Yeah, they're just going, it's blinding me. <laughs> and then I I'm up there and I'm riffing and I'm having fun and I I said to some to some guy about. Uh, not knowing technology, I'm like, uh, I'm sure you got more John Deere equipment than you do uh, computers and data, something like that, you know? Ooh, the crowd hits me with a ooh. And, and now I'm going up there in my head, I'm like, I, I'm doing a, a benefit show for my daughter's <laughs> swim club, and I'm on a stage with construction lights on me. And I'm, you know, I'm and people, you know, Recognize the favor, people. Right? You know. <laughs> but then, no. But we had a great time. It was really fun, and my wife and then they put it together. It was really fun. But uh, uh, guys, how much funny how so. How much time I did, did you do? Oh, okay. I did an hour, but like when I got and it was it really went fun, and everyone was laughing. But you know, you get to that. I do the last thing, I get a laugh, and I'm like, ah, I could da da da, and, I, and I'm like, hey, good night. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just, but <laughs> Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra, Cialis, and Levitra, but in chewable tablets and at a fraction of the cost, baby. Now, you can take them anytime, people. It's not like you got to throw in a chewable tablet while you're sitting in bed <laughs> naked going, hold <laughs> on, honey. Wait till this kicks in. No. You could plan ahead. Have some eggs in the morning and a side of blue chew. All right? Or be ready whenever the opportunity arises. You got the best of both worlds. It's true. The, the process is simple. <laughs> no, it really is. Sign up at bluechew.com. 
consult with one of their licensed medical providers. And once you're approved, and hey, I don't even know what the approval process is. I mean, you'd basically call up and go, I ain't hard. <laughs> <laughs> You'll receive your prescription within days, right, Pete? Absolutely. And, and you know what's so beautiful about this Bluetooth, like Sebastian said, you know, some of these other ones, you got to look at the woman in your life and be like, baby, I got to know if this is happening or not, because if I'm popping this pill, it's got to go down. With the blue chew, if you just sense it might go down, you can pop one. And if it don't go down, that's fine too. Pop one the next day. The best part, it's all done online. So you have no visits to the doctor's office, no awkward conversations, and no waiting in line at the pharmacy. Blue Chew's tablets are made in the USA, baby, and prepared and shipped direct to your door in a discreet package. So you don't have to worry about any neighbors wondering what's going on. They say there's nothing sexier than confidence, and Blue Chew can help give you confidence where it counts. Blue Chew wants to help you have better sex. Discover your options at BlueChew.com. Chew it and do it. And we've got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew free when you use our promo code the cast at checkout. Just pay five dollars in shipping. That's bluechew.com promo code the cast to receive your first month free. Visit bluechew.com for more details and important safety information. And we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring the podcast. You know, it's funny how those kind of uh Sometimes it's the littlest weird, you know, the show that shouldn't be any pressure is the one that's bothering you. Oh most, yeah, man. man. Oh yeah, especially when you're you're going into uncharted waters, uh, no stage, half lighting, you yeah. know, audience that might not even know what the hell's going on. You know, they're just there to support in the swim club. Next thing you know, you're ripping into them for not having technology. <laughs> <laughs> I know, man. Oh, oh. my god, that was so, all right though. Speaking of performances, uh, my daughter uh, auditioned for Beauty and the Beast last week in her little okay. theater group. She yeah. loves she loves uh, the theater. You know, she loves. She's done a couple of plays so far, and of course, me being a a dad, um, I've been to the last. I think it's three shows she's done, and uh, I'm looking at the other talent up there, and you know, of course, I'm judging. Like this, this one's got more lines than my daughter. You know, like you ever do that where you kind of go. What? Well, did they already pick the parts, or are we just auditioning at this point? We are we auditioned for Beauty and the Beast, but I'm saying in prior plays. Oh, okay, right, right. Serafina, right, right. the last play didn't have a lot of lines, right. and I felt in watching the play that there was a bit of um, politics going right. on yeah. in the casting of this thing right well let's be honest though bro the way your career is going your daughter's going to be playing your daughter in a real movie someday anyway <laughs> <laughs> daddy will give you plenty of lines in daddy's next movie don't worry <laughs> well i know how hard she's working <laughs> on these, on these yeah. auditions you know she's the her and lana are really like you know she's she's really you, working hard. So do you Good. sing in the in the audition for Beauty and the Beast? Is there singing yeah. in that audition? Wow, yeah. wow, man! How what are we talking now? Six, five, five. Already feeling the pressure of an audition process. It's good. It's good. Yeah, growing up lesson and all that. Absolutely. So she she did it, and she did it in front of us. And you know, of course, you know, his parents have, hey, yeah, there's a little bit more personality show, you know, your you know, bubbly personality. So she did it last week and and uh and I go, How'd you do? She's like, I, I did good, Daddy. Uh I hope I hope I get it, you know. And uh I said, Okay, you know, like if you don't get it, you know, they'll give you other parts. You know, so everybody auditions with the same song and based on that song they start populating the play with, with the talent. Right. So I said, Hey, you know, if you don't get that part, it's okay, you know. She's just like, I just don't want to play a boy, you know, like, because it's all girls. And then some of the male parts oh, are, right. 
are girls. She's like, I just don't want to play a boy, you know? I don't want to put my hair up in a bun and, you know, I just, I just don't want to do that. I want to just, I want to be, she, she goes, I want to be pretty. <laughs> so now I'm thinking we get the results today, right? Right, right. And again, I know I've seen the talent in there and there's some kids that are really cute. And there's some, I'm just saying if I was running things over there, it would be a little different on who gets what part. My question to you is, if she mm-hmm. does get, like, if she goes out for Belle, who, who's beauty, and she ends up being a flower, do I got the right to go up to them and go, I got a problem with the way this is being worked out? Or do I just shut my mouth and go and look at my daughter as a flower? <clears throat> Do they um, do they put these kids on tape for their audition? That's a good question. I don't think so. Uh, I that's a good question. I don't think okay. so. I haven't seen a tape. I haven't seen anything. But I just know from what I'm from what I'm seeing. I I don't know. I'll ask her. But I don't know. Uh, I'm just going it solely based on what I'm seeing. Uh-huh. And I know my brain is polluted with the fact that she's my daughter, and I go, "Oh my God, this is so cute." I, I get it. I mean, I, I'm, but I'm also filtering this through the eyes of a casting director. Going, if a kid like that walked in, I didn't know him, or wasn't related to them, right? Then there'd be a high probability that kid would have a big part in this play. <laughs> if if what I don't get that last part. If I was a casting director and my daughter yeah. walked in. I would say she would get, she would be a big role in the play. She Based on big, what you're seeing her in, in her audition. Yeah. Well, my, my, my thing is this. My thing is this. When you try out for a sport as a kid, I remember my dad watching me try out sometimes for stuff, off on the sidelines or watching from the court. I think the parents should be allowed to watch the auditions <laughs> to see what you're picking so that, you know, we can all be like, come on. You know what I'm saying? Or That's go... What? Or go the opposite and go, you know, Seraphine, what are you going to do? That girl was, like, unbelievable. Just be lucky you're a flower. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. Yeah. No, I agree because at least the parent would have an idea of the talent pool that the the people are choosing from so they could go. Like your father, like, shit, when I played basketball freshman, I made the B team, rightfully so. Right. And and my father said, you know, you lucky you're going to get – on the bench on the beat team based on what I saw in the in, in the first practice. So I think uh, you're, you're on to something in regards to the parents being a part of the audition process, but I, I know why they, you know, if, if that was the case, they, all these parents would be in there bitching and complaining about why their right. kid's not where they're supposed to be. But we get the results today, and, uh, and, uh, but and we'll see. But the thing is this. If this is an all girls class, right? All girl production. Well, it's two boys, and there's like oh, there twelve is. girls. I was gonna yeah. say, I mean, you know, how are you gonna talk one of these girls into being the beast as a parent? You know what I mean? <laughs> that, that's a tough sell. But you got there is a boy that's gonna play the beast. Thank gosh. Well, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> no, no, we don't. <laughs> I gotta go to Sadie. Listen. So the uh, teacher called. What do you think about being the beast? But hear me out. Hear me out. Hear me out. You know you. <laughs> <laughs> shit. Oh uh, shit. Uh, well that's cool that she's got the bug. You don't even know, bro. There could be this going on. There could be this going on. Your daughter's crushing it and the teacher's like, I know this other little girl would love it too. And Seraphine is probably gonna be in her daddy's TV shows and movies <laughs> down the line, so let's give it to the other girl. There's a lot going on there, man. Oh, anyway, shit. that's gonna be fun, man, to like uh see our kids do stuff like that's the thing when we watch that watt video for his his mom and dad you know when the mom's like we expected big things and hope for big things but wow can yeah. you imagine watching your kid like can you imagine just watching your daughter on broadway doing a monologue <laughs> you're in the front row with tears just flowing <laughs> awesome dude Broadway. I was in tears, uh, tears at the last play I went to go see her in, and she had and she had four lines. 
<laughs> How long is the audition like as far as uh, could you memorize it? I know it now just because I've heard it so long, you know, wow. for so many times in the car on the way to school. She's singing one yeah, by yeah. one, and, th- and I was like, okay. Uh, Caruso knows the song. Is he showing any acting interest? You know what he's showing? Jiu-jitsu ability. Oh, yeah. So this guy runs up on me, and he gets on my back and takes me down. And it's like, yeah, it's like he's three, you know. Right. But yeah. but then I'm like going, is this abnormally strong for a kid his age? Uh, right. And I went over here. I want to I wanna, I wanna throw this one out. Yeah. Went over to a friend of ours house, and I was wrestling with Caruso on the grass, and the th- the other kids that were there started piling on me, like they started wrestling with me too. Yeah. What's your What's your take on like other kids? Yeah. Like, yeah. The, like wrestling. Like I didn't know what to do. I'm like, I you know, I'm not, I don't want to. Like I toss my kid yeah. around because I just know. It's right. my kid, and I, I yeah. Don't be, but like when another kid starts wrestling you, you're like, hey, what, what? Like, I don't want to be that guy where I just laid down and let them like <laughs> jump on my back. <laughs> right, right, right. There was well, no, I would give like, them a delicate push over, like a little, just the just gently right over there, and get back at it with my kid. <laughs> it's wild, though. isn't it? Wild though, when you first get to the point where you're wrestling with your kid, and the, and it's the first time that they've ever actually physically hurt you, like. <laughs> For my daughter, it's the kicking, and I remember she reached a certain age where she'll kick me. I'm like, and she gave me a Charlie horse, and I'm like, <laughs> it just changed the dynamic. You know what I mean? Where, it, and with a boy, you know, the way they come and jump on you, I see it all the time with my brother's kids and stuff. It's like if I'm not expecting it, you could break a rib. Oh yeah, when you no, jump, he, right? He he came at me and he he banged his head against my forehead. <laughs> I and I went down. And he he didn't like he didn't even feel it. He's just looking at me. (laughs) (laughs) Fucking headbutted you. (laughs) He wasn't affected. I was laid out. (laughs) Right. I I couldn't handle a boy. I feel like God knew at my age. He's like, listen, (laughs) man. You get. I mean, I see them. I go to the the waiting room somewhere. I see he's sitting there, relaxed, probably like your daughter. They're fucking all over the place. (laughs) You know. Yeah, it's a different, Handful, it's a different man. vibe. All right, listen, I, I, I got this one story. This is another one of these stories. Hope you Yesterday, I was, uh, <laughs> I was walking down the sidewalk, coming back from lunch with my family, Lon and the two kids. And I don't know where this guy come up to me. He goes, hey, man, what's up? And it took me a while to figure out who this guy was. It's a guy that used to come into the Four Seasons when I used to work there. I wouldn't say he was a regular, but he used to come in with another buddy. Cool guys, you know, just hanging out, you know, kind of rough around the edges. Not like the typical clientele that was at the Four Seasons at that time. These guys were on, like, the fringe. Yeah. Um, You know, they would stop in for a drink and then go to the nightclubs from New York, you know, kind of brash. Yeah. I haven't seen him in 15, what, 16 years since, you know, shit, longer than that, 17 years. So he's like, oh, my God, bro, five, what's going on? So happy for you. You know, like 17 years ago I went into the Four Seasons, you just weren't there anymore, and they said that you had made it. I can't believe, you know, you're so funny and this and that. I said, oh, thanks, man, I appreciate it. He goes, um, this your family? I said, yes, my family. My God, like, you know, nice. We shook everybody's hand. He's like, I got your number. Is this your number? I go, no, that's not my number anymore, right? And just I gave him my new number, not even thinking anything of it. Eh, my new number, what, I, what have you. Now Lana and the kids go, we're going to go get a cup of coffee. We'll be right back. And he starts talking. They go, you you talk to the the, the your buddy Bill anymore? He goes, nah, he, He's, uh, nah, nah, now nah, nah, I'm sensing something going on. Yeah. He's like, yeah, he, he didn't really help me out. He goes, I got, I got into some trouble. 
and I needed a friend and he wasn't there for me. And he looks at me and I look at him and he goes, uh, I'll tell you. He goes, uh, I did time. Oh, right? Yeah. It's in prison. No joke. He goes, this prison was no joke. And he names the prison, right? But he named the prison like I knew prisons, right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, like he said it as if he goes, yeah, you know, I did time in Alcatraz. I, right. I, but it wasn't Alcatraz. It was like, a, yeah. you know, like. I did like, three, years, like, three years at Soften. <laughs> right? <laughs> like I did time there. You know, that's, that's the way yeah. he was. Yeah, that's like one you, of Montana, right? Yeah, that, those winters. <laughs> Fucking winters. Were you in cell block D with the? Oh god. Okay. <laughs> There's no air conditioning in that one. You know, there, it was like he, he had said it like like a college. You know, right. like you don't remember like, the name of it though, dude. I don't remember the name. Wow, man. Wow. And <laughs> they, they, they usually they, tell you how much time when they tell you the place. I I asked. Yeah. Because yeah, I don't know if you've been around anybody that's done time in prison, but no. I feel like when you asked how long they did in prison, it it then alters your thinking of what they went through. Like if someone tells you what I did, they fi- did. <laughs> what they it did, it alters my thinking of what they did. If they go, I did a year, I'm like, yeah, hey, he probably didn't pay his taxes. I was in the uh, soften for 15. I'm like, guy killed his wife. <laughs> Fucking guy driving me killed his wife. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and yeah, and your boy, play, and he got raped quite a bit. I mean, I feel like it, I could dodge people for a year, right? I can keep my cheeks tight for a year. By, by, by year 15, I'm married, guy. <laughs> 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 You're somebody's bitch. Oh, oh, hey, maybe he's mine. Who knows? You know, but no, yeah, of course. I'm slapping on lipstick and uh, doing a high voice. <laughs> Good morning, Ken. <laughs> oh God, uh, but, I haven't had my piece of cake at dinner in a long time. Let's put it that way. My hubby <laughs> needs two. <laughs> <laughs> Oh shit! Uh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Did he tell you how many years? Fifteen months. Right. All right. White collar crime. I know the crime. I'm just not gonna. I'm not gonna yeah, tell no, you because no. it's. Yeah. yeah. It was. It wasn't. He didn't. Didn't. It wasn't murder or anything like that. But he tells me he's a born again Christian, right? Right. But he's Jewish. Is that possible? Is he still Jewish? Or is he like, I was Jewish, now I'm born again Christian? Well, could you go born again and just technically say it's born again Jewish? So like, you're saying he, he did a born again thing, but born again Jewish. Born, I never no, heard of that. No, no, no. He's born again Christian, but he's Jewish. But what I'm saying is, is it like interchangeable? Like, nah, uh, I feel if you're, like once you're born again Christian, you wipe away whatever you were, because now you're Christian, right? And by the way, I just don't. Born, born, when people are born again, first of all, they always have to tell you. And and even when you're not with them, if they're gonna be where you are, like let's say you're born again, and I'm going to a party, I'd be like, and my friend Sebastian's coming. They always warn you too. Like my friend's coming, he's born again. Like they let you know someone's coming to your party that's born again. Yeah, because it's, it's so, very weird. But what I'm saying is, is the born again brand, born again Christian, I look at it as a brand, and that's what you do when uh, you had <clears throat> trouble. In a previous life, then you all of a sudden you go, you know what? I'm going to leave that behind, I restart, born again. It's like it's like the new year. It's like a new year's resolution, right? <laughs> You're right. It's, right. So it's a cleanse. Yes, it's a cleanse. So what I'm saying is, if you're Muslim, if you're Jewish, and you do something bad, and you want to restart, 
do you go, okay, do you go to the Jewish uh, religion and go, is there like a born again Jewish like thing I could get involved in? And they go, no. <laughs> right. Oh, fuck. Let me, you know, <laughs> let me go outside the religion now to the Christian because they offer a program <laughs> right. where you could, you could be born again. That's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. Right. I know what you're saying. But that's yeah. like, you know, they got a wax that's designed just for a Porsche, and I'm putting it on my Prius. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> you can't take the born-again method and apply it to the Judaism guy. It's like, it, that don't work. If you do born-again, you are now Christian. Right. Yeah, but, like, aren't there oh. in the born-again, like, class? I, I, I don't know what right. they go through, right? I don't know what right. born-again and what they go through. and what, But, but right. can't they adapt... The born again again brand like okay Maybe. welcome to right. let's say let's say it is a class they come in and they go okay welcome to born again all right, right. what you got to do to be born again is you got to do five things you got to go and you know <laughs> right <laughs> you got to wash <laughs> you got to wash your face with the water you got to you got to go into a steam room. Or whatever the hell right. the thing is. Gotta be baptized in a river. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> Fucking confession. Yeah. Like, but the thing is, you're Catholic. Let's say you murder somebody mm -hmm. and, you know, and you want forgiveness, so you go to a priest, forgive me, blah, blah, blah. Right? You're still Catholic. You're just asking for forgiveness. If you go, ah, listen, that ain't enough. I gotta do a deep cleanse. <laughs> is that what born again is? Like, <laughs> Like sometimes you do something so bad that you got you got to reboot this whole fucking thing. Like you're like a, like that. Don't you know? I don't like, understand. Be nobody, anyone who's ever born again, like you said earlier, it's because some heavy shit happened <laughs> in the past, right? Yeah, no, no one's just sitting around going, "I don't know, life's pretty good." Yeah, be born again would be nice. I mean. It, 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 <laughs> That'd be a fun Sunday. Why don't we do that? <laughs> oh, God. Uh, so they got you. I guess they got you in sawmill after all, huh, fella? <laughs> now, so, now, by the way, by the way, yeah, bro, yeah. the minute he tells you that, isn't there a party that's like, an ex-convict has me in their phone contacts now. That's not, <laughs> that's, that's, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> I was like, oh, shit, now if they, if they, let's say he goes to another... Let's say he goes through a relapse and he goes back to that life, and then they get his phone and they go, the fuck you got? What did he do? I got to get a call from the police in two years. Did you give your number? Right. Outside of Starbucks? To yeah. Nah, nah. You hope it's a call. I'm worried. Knock at the door, 6 a.m. Search warrant. Do you make coffee? That's what I do. I tell, I tell Jackie, put coffee on for him. Let him know how much, like, we don't care about, like... Like there's one way to do it where like to do it good fellas. Get the fuck out of here. And yeah, the other yeah. way is uh guys you want you guys want some coffee? Because if I was a FBI and I'm doing a search warrant and the wife offered me coffee, I turn to my guy and go, There's nothing here to give me a coffee. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you think the coffee plays into you think the coffee plays into the search? <laughs> they, they, they were flipping the mattresses over, and then and the and the guy comes in. And he goes, George, they just offer us coffee. Make the bed. Let's get the fuck out. Of here. <laughs> Let's get the. You listen. You're about to go to jail because you got a brick of cocaine. You don't offer somebody coffee. You're enticing me to stay longer. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> in your case, pretty soon you'll be able to offer tea with a little homemade honey. <laughs> We're too good, bro. We got to stop. This <laughs> enough. We got to. Show's over. I mean, Jesus. How much? much? How much could you give? <laughs> I don't for know. barely, for barely no pay. <laughs> I know. I know. People, people are like no pay. We've already went through an Omaha commercial. Uh, uh, uh my, <laughs> yeah. You know. Well, people no. are saying there's too much commercials on this thing. I know. You know. Yeah. But what are we, what are you gonna do? I mean, it's just it's just part of the. Part yeah. of the thing, you know where you know where there's no commercials, Patreon, five dollars a month, you get one episode. There you go. You get one episode extra a month. You get behind the scenes footage, and it's all right there. And you get early yeah. access. Does the early access have the the, the commercials? Eh. You don't want any commercials. Early access on Patreon, five bucks a month, price of a extra cup show. of coffee. 
Yeah. And you get a better buzz. So uh, so what's going on with this daddy versus doctor podcast? All right. So it's a pe- my pediatrician, our family pediatrician, and myself. What we do is we basically take callers. And the callers are calling in about anything from, hey, I have a behavioral problem with my son to... My daughter has a rash on her back. And basically the doctor gives a, uh, you know, a general diagnosis of what it can be. And then I add a little flavor, a little humor. And uh, yeah. basically it's infotainment. Um, it's, it's providing information to parents uh, about the health and well-being of their kids. But it's made fun because we feel that a lot of these parents feel like they're on an island you well know that you know when when sadie's sick you think you're the only one going through that and what this show does is kind of let everybody know that you're not alone everybody's dealing with these problems and uh it's fun it's informative and we really have a good time with it he's a doctor he's a parent i'm a i'm a parent and we feel like this show is something that uh, it's it's a category that's not really being served right. in the podcast community. It's two guys talking about parenting. Generally, you know, everything's kind of geared towards mommy, mommy, daughter of classes, mommy and me or whatever. And you don't really see the perspective from a dad's point of view. So we feel like this is uh, something that uh, we feel that people need. And we have fun doing it because... The doctor and I often talk off air about pediatrics and whatnot. It tends to to get a little funny, and we figure, why not we pay, make a podcast about it? That's that, and that's the key too, because sometimes I know, like on these certain platforms, they do have shows like Doctor Raz or something where maybe you can get a little insight onto stuff like this. But you put those on, and within like five minutes, I'm like, ah, I feel like I'm in a doctor's office. I'm. <laughs> That's why there's a nice yin and yang with the daddy mm-hmm. doctor podcast. Well, thank you. I Your appreciate doctor's it. a funny guy too, man. He's a good dude. Yeah, and it's not like he's a he's a stuffy doctor. He, Pete Pete met him at our, at the party and uh, definitely has a sense of humor about him. Very relaxed. He's the only doctor I know that wears cologne, so uh, he's got to be cool. <laughs> So there you have it, Daddy versus Doctor. Every Friday, a new episode up on uh, any platform that you uh, get your podcasts.